Today we will discuss party systems and we will look at case studies of the four countries that we have studied before <clears throat> and look at how their party systems look like. We have discussed electoral systems, right? How votes are transformed into seats into the parliament, into the legislature. Uh, the other important aspect that we discussed was political ideologies. But these two factors, right, uh, together with the given specific context of the country, the historical context, the, the crisis that uh, it went through, <clears throat> the, the political system it has, right, um, its past and its present, so context plus electoral system plus ideologies gives you the spectrum of parties in each uh, country, in each state. Well, we're talking now about democracies at this time, so. Um, so what I'm trying to point out, and we'll see the case studies, is that these are not absolutes. Right? And as we talked about political ideologies, right? These are um, developments that are very place and time specific. Right? Certain ideologies come up, uh, because what are ideologies but sets of ideas, right? And they come up in response to certain <coughs> uh, factors, certain, as I mentioned, crises, developments, political, economic, and so on. So in, there is no absolute right and left and, and, and so on, although there are commonalities and because we inhabit the same world, there is a dialogue, there is an influence, a reciprocal influence, right? The political influence between different the political systems of different countries. But you will not make sense of a, of a political system unless you study the specific state, the specific country, the specific history, the specific context. Because, as I said, political culture is a very important thing. And what is political culture? Uh, is the set of expectations and ideas about politics in a given society. Right? And that society, you know, uh, can actually be made of several societies. So you have different political cultures and so on. Right? So because people have different expectations about political, what politics is, what politics should do, different categories, they think differently about what should we what should be done, what can politics do, what we shouldn't expect from politics, or what, what is the place of politics in, in human life. These are very different um, views on this. And just because I have my view, because I grew up here, doesn't mean that's also true elsewhere. Actually, it isn't. Actually, it isn't. Right? Plus, as I said, so political culture, which is shaped by the context, the historical context, what we went through, what we learned from that, uh, institutions that were built and that still shape our uh, views and so on. The example of the US Constitution is excellent because nobody, as I said, asks you ever if you uh, agree with the US Constitution. You never were asked to sign, to sign up, right? You were born, perhaps, right? <coughs> unless, unless you were naturalized, right? Uh, you were born into a system with a, a given set of rules and values and you just accepted it because you said, well, this is normality. Well, it's not. It is not. Right? It is a set of, of, of rules and values that you have accepted without questioning them. Right? And you were never asked if you agree or if you want to sign in. Or maybe you want to step back. Maybe you want to have a caveat or so on. So, that's the situation. right? Uh, and don't forget that this political context is only changes decade after decade. It's a, it's a different... Uh, the, what, what words mean, what uh, ideologies contain, change, changes decades after decades. So, uh, but long story short, let's look at a few party systems, but first let, let us define and talk about what is a party system. Party system is a short uh, shorthand for how many parties there are in the political system and what is the type of relationship between. That's, that's about it. That's a party system. It's not very complicated. How many parties? What is the relationship between them? And when we see, let's look at a few forms and you understand what I mean. So the first form that you're familiar with is a two-party system, which means that there are two major parties which alternate in power, and because there are only two, one of them will usually have a majority in the legislature. Right? Because that's the, what the game is about. In a representative democracy, parties try to... Uh, uh, ascend to government, but how do you do that? <coughs> in most, the most political systems you have to um, obtain a majority of seats in the legislature, because that's where the rules are made. Right? Um, 
So in a two-party system, because there are only two, you divide a, a, a pi in two, you know, it's very hard to divide it straight in the middle, so there's always more and there's always on one side and less on the other, right? That's the principle of two-party systems. And there are many reasons for a two-party system, right? Um, and a pure two-party system or quasi-pure two-party system doesn't accept for a third party. There are many reasons here. Electoral systems is the one reason. And the <coughs> electoral system, uh, not by chance that there is uh, that we have in the US, leads to the party system. is SMD, FDP. We saw how this works, right? It exaggerates majorities. It doesn't really reflect the balance of forces in the population, right? The balance of opinions. Uh, then, after you've had a two-party system for a long while, people get used to the fact that there are two major choices, right? But again, that's not real or true, right? But because you have two institutions that vie, right, uh, and kind of, because there are only two, both of them try to cover, each of them tries to cover a big chunk of the political spectrum. Uh, they try to cover as much as they can, right? So they, these are, in two-party systems, usually what happens is that each of these parties is actually a coalition. It's a coalition, meaning they have, it's a, it's a, it reunites under one umbrella many smaller groups, interests, um, ideas, opinions, beliefs, ideologies even, right? So it, it's not really two parties, or two alliances or coalitions. Um, so because they're so broad and they're so flexible and they just want to, you know, their goal is to get as much support as possible in the election, right? That's, that's the point. Uh, then they will um, try to cover as much from the uh, political options out there, right? Uh, which means that you will find your options somewhere reflected within this large spectrum. But of course, the very idea that there's either or is obviously not true, right? Even philosophical and so on. <coughs> this is, there's, and especially in politics where we deal with practical solutions, there's no such thing as either or, right? Things are much more complicated. But this is a simple model, and because when it keeps existing, because of this tendency to occupy as much as from the political spectrum as possible, people get used to the fact that there are only two options. So there's a situation, for example, here. US. But it's very rare around the world, actually, in a democracy to have a two-party system. Jamaica is another one, right? It's not really the case, right? So this is a unique uh, situation. Electoral system plays a role here, as I said, because it eliminates the small parties. Think of the wasted votes, right? The fact that you, you will not vote for a quote-unquote third party, right? Because you know it will never get enough to be a decisive force. So it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. <coughs> Catch 22, right? So that's a two party system. But the most, you know, obviously the widest uh, multi party systems, right, are more widely encountered, right? It's the widest encountered model of party systems, which means simply that there are many several parties, right? That's, that's all that it means. What are the implications of, of this? Well, one of them. Well, clearly you will probably not have SMD, FPP, because multi-party means that there are different ideologies that get representation into the parliament. This is why the US, for example, is a two-party system, and the UK was for the longest time. Because, <clears throat> although it doesn't mean that there aren't other parties, right? I can, I can start a party tomorrow. It means that there are two parties, effectively, that, have a, that, that com compete for positions in governance. Here in a multi-party system, there are several, many parties that compete <coughs> for positions in government. What sort of electoral system um, is more conducive to a multi-party system? Obviously, something more closely resembling to PR, right? Proportional representation. Because there, all and each of the uh, types of ideologies, interests, opinions, uh, groups in the population can get their own distinct representation. And in a PR system, you will vote for the tiny, smaller party, because you, you know, being PR, that you're, they will get some seats in the, in the parliament. And you don't want, <coughs> you don't care if it's not the largest party, because what you want is to get your opinion, your opinion represented. Uh, so, multi-party systems. Now, one of, what are one of some of the consequences of a multi-party system? Right, in a two-party system, you have basically, well, two. <laughs> In a multi-party system, obviously, in the legislature, you will have, well, several. So what happens here? Well, what happens is that we won't have a state, um, one party 
getting the majority. It's very rare in a multi-party system with a quasi-PR uh, electoral system to have a, a majority, right, from one party. Right? So what do they need to do? They need to enter into coalitions. So coalitions are alliances, right, groupings of different parties uh, that are made in order to organize the, the their, their work, obviously, their uh, activity, but basically to form majorities. Yeah? That's, that's why people, they enter their coalitions. And once they form majorities, they will <coughs> also get seats into the government, for example, right? So that's, that's, the, that's the goal, right? A party is in power only if there's a majority in the legislature. That's the way it works. Um, and in a multi-party system, you need to enter coalitions. So notice that it's similar in a way to this because here the coalitions are within the party, uh, and here the coalitions are between parties. But in any case, <coughs> it's uh, one of the positives here again is representation. The different ideas, different the choices are wider. The choices are more varied as they are, <laughs> and even here they're overly simplified, right? Because it's, there's no such thing as only a cluster of sort of choices, only the other cluster of choices. Reality doesn't work like that. But parties need to synthesize these choices. Um, <clears throat> so, multi party coalitions. One of the downsides of a multi party coalition, if, for example, you have a, Israel used to have pure PR, and as you re realize, that means that any, um, that there is no threshold, right? So, basically, even a party obtaining 1% or even less, depending on the number of seats in the parliament, would get representation, right? So, what results from this? Obviously, a threshold is introduced in order to eliminate the very tiny parties and not to have fragmentation in the legislature, right? A pure PR would lead to a, a high fragmentation. Uh, that's, that's a problem, right? Why is it a problem? Because it's harder to make coalitions, right? Um, just because there are many parties doesn't mean that it's hard to make coalitions, right? What actually happens is that these parties uh, join into blocks. And when you vote for a party, even if it's tiny, you know who they will ally themselves with. So there is a left-right sort of an arrangement, whatever left and right means in that specific political culture, in that specific political system, don't forget that, doesn't mean the same, right? Think of political ideologies. But there are, they form blocks, and you kind of know that the, these part, this party will ally itself with this one, this one with others, so you kind of know where this is leading. And the parties commun uh, communicate and collaborate during the campaign and kind of plan and even say it before that, well, when, when we, uh, after the election, we're going to form a government with this part. And there are coalition partners, right? So even if you can have 12 parties, right, that doesn't mean that it's unstable. But there can be instability, and Italy is a classic case of instability, where you have too many small parties. But that's not the problem again. The problem was that part also, they don't want to work with each other. There was a case uh, eight years ago, probably, uh, when less uh, six, probably, uh, when uh, the government fell because uh, Italy has a parliamentary system, so you have you need a majority in the parliament, and the government fell, <coughs> the executive fell because they had a one person, one seat majority in the Senate, and that one seat or two were from a tiny party which only had those two seats. That party withdrew their support from the government, the government fell. So, uh, they, when that happens, you need, they need to rearrange the coalitions or to have new elections. So that's a downside, right, of multi-party uh, systems that you can have instability, but again, it really depends on the political culture of the, of the state, it's not a given. Right. Then you have, so these are democratic variations, and again, this is very rare, this is normal, so to speak. Not always, you don't always have PR in order, you don't always need PR in order to have a multi-party system. Um, it's also a matter of, again, as I said, political culture. If the population is very diverse from different regions, with different cultures, different languages, different ethnic groups, right, different religious groups, they will keep voting for a specific uh, um, party, even if it's small, and even if it's not PR, right? Uh, for example, Canada, has a system uh, similar to the U.S. electoral system, so you would expect, well, obviously they will have a two-party system. No, they have a multi-party system, because Canada is a very large, very diverse country, and different provinces has their, have their own traditional political identities. So you have the 
French parties in uh, Quebec, and you have um, socialists, which are not the same with... Um, there, there are more radical socialists and less socialists, and then there's a, a, a sort of a center-right party, sort of a conservative, but it's a, also an alliance of two parties. So, you know, you have a combination of things. It's not just one, right? Um, and because people have a very a strong cultural, ideological uh, affinity, identity, and relationship with these parties, you result in a multi-party uh, system. In fact, rarely do, I mean, in the last what, 15 years, only now does Canada have a, <coughs> a party that has a majority. Most of the time, you had minority governments. And that, that can happen. Minority governments means that the party that forms the government does not have the majority in the legislature. So what happens? How does how is it able to pass any laws in a parliamentary system, right? Remember that in a parliamentary system, the executive depends on the legislature. So whoever has majority forms the government, right? Because only the parliament is elected, right? So you need the majority, and the leaders from here become the members of the executive and the prime minister. Now that's the Canada's case. So, what is a minority government? A minority government is when you don't have a majority here, so only this party, maybe with an ally, ha have, um, um, can enter into a coalition. So, there is no majority, so how will they pass laws? Well, a minority government is when the other parties, or, or some of the other parties, agree for this group to form the government and promise that they would support them selectively on, on different policies. So, it's basically an ongoing ne negotiation. It's sort of like divided government in the US. Divided government in the US is when the executive is controlled by one party and uh, the Congress or one of the other houses of the Congress is controlled by another. So then the executive who right now, right, uh, President Obama, Democrat, has to work with the, both houses in the Congress after this election who are controlled by the Republicans. They have to pass laws together, right? So it's not that strange. So minority governments kind of work in that way, although it's not the same thing. Good, so these are democratic systems, but then there are dominant party systems. Dominant party system. Dominant party system, basically there is um, one dominant party in the system, right? And that wins all the elections all the time, on and on and on and on. And on. Typical, um, so it doesn't mean they're not democratic. Right? It's not a one-party system, it's a dominant party, but usually they're not... Well, sometimes they're democratic, sometimes they're not very democratic. A democratic case was Japan. Japan, for about 50 years after World War II, was dominated by one party that won all the elections until the late 80s, early 90s. Actually, the end of their dissent or disintegration was only about five years ago. You know, so for 50, 60 years, for five, 40 years they really dominated politics and then 20 years more, they were still a dominating force. So why? Well, again, it's, it's political culture. It's, you know, Japan a democracy. Free elections and all these things, but, you know, there is a part of political culture, um, and Italy was another case until the late 80s, when, uh, until the late 80s, uh, the Christian Democrats won every single election, right? And it was a multi-party system, remember, it's very fragmented even, right? And yet, they always won. So, there are downsides, right? Uh, I said, there, these are democratic examples. There are downsides because, as we'll talk about in the next lecture, um, you need um, a rotation you know, of crops. You need to um, have a rotation of, of people and parties in power. It's kind of healthy for a democracy. And, and you see how it goes against the logic of, well, maybe of a two-party system. Our guys are right and the other guys are wrong. Because in that case, it means that the, the other guys can never win and should never win because they're evil, right? Isn't that, I mean, that's the logic, right? Don't let them win because they're evil, right? Well, actually, in democracy, you have to have this rotation. You have to have, because that's, that's part of the assumption in a democracy is that people, um, well, somewhat underlying the assumption, not shared by everyone, is that people are uh, not reliable, that power corrupts, and part of checking on power is to make them uh, leave after a while. So a dominant party system, not all of them have been democratic, uh, the party of uh, institutionalized 
revolution, uh, which dominated Mexico for what 80 years or so. Um, you know that wasn't really a democratic system. Or there were some minor parties that competed. Or in um, Singapore, which is sort of well, it's not completely democratic. It's sort of an illiberal democracy. Not liberal, illiberal. We'll talk about this in the next lecture. So Singapore also has one dominant party, which has been in power in Singapore and has been voted in, yeah, winning elections since Singapore exists as an uh, independent uh, state. So one dominant party, but then there are the one-party systems. And this is a problem, right, because there is what? Only one party. It doesn't really sound uh, democratic, right? There's only one choice. And these are usually authoritarian, totalitarian regimes, which we're going to discuss in the next lecture non-democratic regimes, one party controls the state and uses the tools of the state to maintain, uh, to remain in power. So the next, um, the second part of this lecture we will look at uh, the four states or four countries we have examined to see the party systems there.